Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a tour through this watercolor sketchbook that I finished. This is the Arteza watercolor sketchbook and now that I've used it all the way through I can give you an informed opinion on what I think about this product overall. I did a first impressions type review of this and a few other Arteza products before, but obviously I've now used every page in the book and I can better tell you what I think about this. And basically I think it's totally fine, totally good, totally worth it because they come in a pack of two. And if you are interested in purchasing this book, I will have links in the description below to this product on both the US and the UK sites uh, that Arteza has. So you can go there if you do purchase it through my links. I'm an affiliate, so I get a little bit of money back um, at no extra cost to you. Yeah, so let's get into the book here. The outside, of course, is this sort of uh, roughly woven fabric, and you can see that it has the Arteza imprint on the back. One thing that I don't like about this sketchbook is that you can't put stickers on the outside. It's fabric. You can't put your stickers on. And I love to put stickers on my sketchbook, so that's like the only drawback for me, really. So the first page here was the swatches that I did with some of my other Arteza products. I started this on January 31st and finished it on June 8th, so a few months there. And as you can see, there's this sort of I'll lift the sketchbook up and let it focus. This sort of strange bleed effect around some of the some of the swatches. So that's basically from the sizing in the paper being inconsistent. And that happened for the first few pages of this book, the first little like start of it. Um, but then it sort of went away. So I was worried. I was worried the whole book would be like this and do this weird blooming effect but it was actually just the first few pages and that may be something to do with how they adhere the page to here or how they do the printing on here i don't know i i really i don't know <laughs> basically that didn't happen for the rest of the book and i know i talked about that a lot in the comments and in the first video that i did um some books, they're just inconsistent as to the sizing and the paper quality. One thing with these as well is that they're not double-sided paper. You have a nice grain, I'll show you here, a nice grain on one side and on the other side, when you flip it, it's smooth. So the smooth side does not take pigment as well as the rougher side I found, but Oh, and one thing too, like you can see that this, that's actually interesting. So the first signature here, because it's attached to the front cover, the first signature is actually a bit shorter than the other ones. Um, so you're getting the, you're getting this smooth paper against this rough paper, which doesn't happen for most of the rest of the book. Mostly you'll have the smooth facing smooth and rough facing rough. So not sure why that is, um, but just something to note, I guess. Um, I used some markers in this in this sketchbook, some gouache perhaps, not, a, not much. This mostly was a watercolor sketchbook for me. So now that we've sort of talked about the book, um, a, basically it's it's a fine book it's a fine sketchbook it comes in a pack of two and that might be useful for you I think my favorite will forever be the pentallic aqua journal but I've been branching out trying new things um, but I'm sure getting back to the pentallic aqua journal will kind of feel like coming home <laughs> so here are some sketches here that I did with watercolor and pencil And these ones here were kind of based off of the show Vikings, which I was watching a fair bit about. Um, I liked the first season. Obviously, it's an old show now, so like, <laughs> it's not that interesting that I have an opinion on it. The first season I thought was really good. The second season was okay. And then the third season, I felt like it just went off the rails and like, I don't know, it, it, there was a lot of like tokenism and I didn't really care for the pacing or the character arcs. I feel like they bungled it. Um, 
I started watching The Last Kingdom instead, which is far superior. Um, it, season three also was a little bit weird. It's like there's this season three itis that shows have, you know, where season three is always like, Meh. nobody's favorite season is ever season three, you know, right? Um, but anyway, The Last Kingdom's really cool. And these are some swatches here that I did, I think, with my core watercolors. And just, they're so pretty. Look how pretty they are. And this is when I think I started to really like the texture of this sketchbook. Um, you can see how some of the mixed colors, I'll bring it up here. Oh, good job, camera. Um, you can see how they split into the green and the blue there. Um, and the texture on this is just, I, I really came to like it after a while. I didn't like it at first because I guess it was different. Um, but as I used this sketchbook more often, I was like, you know what? I dig this. So this is the smooth side of the paper again. Basically for this sketchbook, what I did was I used the smooth side for more experimental stuff and I used the rough side for more final type stuff. Um, Stay Home Club, by the way, is a Canadian company that I really like. They do like funny patches and t-shirts and stuff, so if you want to check them out. Um, but I also sort of wrote Stay Home Club because obviously with the pandemic, you know, and social distancing, you wanted to stay home. But also I got temporarily laid off from my job, as I've mentioned before. So that was me being like moody and salty. This is a dress from Animal Crossing that you can get like in the game for your little character that I really like. Um, this is a bad painting, but I tried to paint it. <laughs> and just some leaf sketches over here and some nice type with some shiny paint that I got. and some runes, just practicing doing those in calligraphy. And I quite like these studies that I did on the next few pages of some Viking longboat mastheads or figureheads, um, the dragons that go on the front. This one you can buy in my red bubble shop if you're interested on a variety of products. Cause I think this one turned out the best. I just really like how it looks and this is I think the paint color Stieg from Yulia Cowan's paint set, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous earth tone um, and totally perfect for stuff like this. This one's a little more like a medieval, uh, you know, going into Renaissance gargoyle, you know, where they come off the, the, the side of the building as like a spout. Um, I think these studies just turned out really good. I'm quite proud of these, as well as these rune stones. You can buy some of these on my Redbubble as well as little stickers, and they're super cute. Um, but yeah, just trying to make them look like look like real touchable objects, real stones, um, and it was just a fun exercise. I do actually have a set of runestones now that one of my friends sent me as a gift. Um, and I haven't actually painted those ones in specific yet, but you know what, I should now that I'm looking back at these. And here are some like fake old timey coins that I painted as well. I think this was sort of the start of when I got really back into medieval stuff. Um, I don't want to say medievalism because that's a little more like a pre-Raphaelite, you know, turn of the century type term, but um, just interested in, in history and artifacts and uh, reconstructions and reenactments. This is a painting of David Dawson as King Alfred from The Last Kingdom. And uh, I just, I really have a thing for him. I don't know what to tell you. I think he's so handsome. <laughs> this was the six fan arts challenge that I did and posted on Instagram and Twitter. Um, so this is Morden Solis from the Mass Effect series, Astrid from the How to Train Your Dragon series, Deet from the Dark Crystal series on Netflix. I used to watch the 
film all the time as a kid because my dad used to watch it as a kid, so he introduced me to it. Um, so some people think it's really creepy, but because I sort of grew up with it, I like it a lot. Whereas some people who watched Labyrinth as a kid, like, don't mind it. Whereas I think Labyrinth is the creepiest thing ever. It's so creepy. I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like Labyrinth. It's too creepy. The hands coming out of the walls. Oh, I can't. Mm, eh. <laughs> I really like Jim Henson, but why'd you have to make that? Um, <laughs> this is Paul Muadib. Um, of course, Kyle McLaughlin from the from the David Lynch Dune adaptation. I'm excited for the new Dune film that Denis Villeneuve is doing. Um, I, I'm sure it's like it's not gonna be perfect and so far the screenshots they've released are like underwhelming um, but I really like Jason Moa, I like Timothy Chalamet. Um, I think Timothy Chalamet was really good in The King on Netflix. Um, of course being him being the King Henry the fifth, I believe. Fifth, yes, because Henry the fourth was bullying. I've been <laughs> trying to keep the Henrys straight. Oh my goodness, um, Henry the fifth. This is just a painting of a model that I found online, but I sort of made her into a character that I've been building up um, on the side, which I might possibly be doing a like a collaborative writing project about with her um but uh yeah we haven't really gotten into that yet the world's been kind of nuts it's hard to focus on like making something purely creative and and frankly kind of you know indulgent and selfish and escapist right so um yeah maybe in the future these are just some uh titles of short stories that i was working on briefly um I don't know, I've been kind of self-conscious about my writing lately because of several reasons. Um, I'm not really gonna, <laughs> not really gonna get into them. Um, these are the last of the six fan arts challenge ones. Um, as you can see, like, so this is the smooth side. I did stuff that was more just like playing around and then the rough side, I did like the final pieces. This is Bayorn from The Hobbit, who is one of the recommended uh, characters, and then this is one of the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus's, um, and it's obviously, it's from a screenshot, so it's not scientifically up to date. This is just the, the old school JP puppet Dilophosaurus, so they have like the lips and whatever. They're a weird puppet, like they look really cool, but then you look at them a little bit longer and you're like, oh, this is so, something, something very difficult to draw about it, I guess. Some more rune stones over here. Um, brighter colors this time. I thought they were cute. Um, and then you can see here that the bleeding kind of came back that was happening at the beginning of the book. Um, so that was kind of annoying, um, but it didn't really show up for the rest of the rest of the thing. Here are a couple of helmet studies. This is a Norman helmet. When I did these, I was looking for a particular book that I have, and then I couldn't find it. And of course, n now that I'm looking for the book, sorry, I turned my head to look for it. Um, I don't know where I put it again, but I have a really cool book of armor and helmets and horse armor and stuff like that from the Victorian Albert. Um, and it's like, it's like an old publication, like I want to say 40s or 50s. Um, I got it off of Abe Books, and it's just really cool. It has some really nice plates of, of some old photographs of medieval arms and armor. And then this was a sketch that I did with Stoneground Paint Co.'s Vivianite paint, and I did this without any, like, pencil drawing underneath. So just free freestyle in it with some watercolor. Over here, I was combining some disparate pigments, I guess, to try to get some neat effects. And I think some of them are quite cool. And some little fish here. I find, like, also, you know, these squares are really fun to do, but they crop up in my sketchbook whenever I'm kind of at a creative loss. 
um, I guess, I guess art block in a way. Um, but I, I don't really like the term art block. Um, it's just a, a lower state of creativity or motivation. When you're a professional um, illustrator or designer, art block really doesn't mean anything because you have to work anyway. Um, you have to keep producing stuff because you're on deadlines for clients. And so if you're not feeling it, um, it doesn't matter. And also it's easier to work on something that you have a brief for um, than it is to come up with something entirely fresh and new and creative from your head. So yeah, when I, when I get into, like, it's just, I'm not producing personal work that I'm interested in when I have an art block, I guess, but I'm still fully capable of, you know, rendering finals, sending stuff to clients, things like that. So anyway, that's probably why I'm not going to make one of those, like, what to do about art block videos. I know people have done that before. There's plenty out there. If that's the sort of motivation that you need, but mine would just be like kind of jaded and salty. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do one of those for you. Here's a very layered painting. Um, I think, let's see, what is in here? I think this is, okay, Stone Ground Paint Co. Armenian Purple Ochre. And I think Redwood Willow Burnt Umber Dark and Indigo Genuine. That's the combos on here. And they just, they layer really nicely. It's super cool. Um, so I painted this kind of like plague doctor type, um, you know, vulture, wizard, creepy beast. Um, and then on this side, I uh, just painted a generic medieval or Viking woman. Um, the nice little pinky bits here on uh, the the cheeks and the nose are a coral paint from Jasper Stardust. I know there was a big sort of like thing where um, he kind of copied the Beam Paints paint stones, which was really, really not kosher. Um, <laughs> that was, that was, but it's just this one paint, this one paint I just really love. That's like the only paint I buy from his store is the coral paint. And I just, it does the nicest things for skin tones. It's like, it's chalky. It's, um, more of a gouache. I just, mm, mm, I love it. I love it. I love that one paint. <laughs> just that one. <laughs> Again, just some silly, silly type about staying home during a pandemic with a little cat. I don't have a cat. You know, I've always wanted a cat and never, never been able to have a cat. Um, Finn, my uh, partner, he's allergic to cats. I'm probably allergic to cats. We're not going to get a cat because we just, we have so much like stuff that a cat could knock over and destroy. Um, so I just, we just, we're not, we're not the ideal cat people, I guess, even though I like cats. So I just pet other people's cats. Here is the beginning of my alpha bestiary project that I'm working on. I've finished all of the paintings now, so I just have to edit them and then do the typesetting for the zine that I will eventually, um, get printed and sell on my Etsy shop. It's been a fun project. Um, it's been nice to fill up this sketchbook, um, do a little bit of, you know, research into myth and legend, find some uh, mythological creatures I never really knew about. And I guess as we go through here, I'll tell you a bit about them. So this is uh, Amphivina or Amphispaina, uh, which is actually now a generic name for a type of, I believe, like a legless lizard or a weird weird, weird sort of, weird sort of guy, weird sort of animal. Um, but yeah, the, the medieval version of it is basically a, they call it a serpent with a, a head on the head and a head on the tail too. So not quite an Ouroboros. It doesn't represent the same things as an Ouroboros because the Ouroboros is eating, um, the tail that doesn't have a head, but this one is eating a tail that has a 
head. And that's the difference. <laughs> anyway, this is done in Armenian Purple Ochre from Stone Ground Paint Co. And this whole series is done with uh, single uh, monochromatic pigments. Um, not single pigments, but mo like single paints. Um, some of them are synthetic, but the majority of them are earth pigments. Um, and yeah, I, I love them. I love Stone Ground Paint Co. It's basically my favorite. And so doing this project was a really nice way to showcase their paint um, and basically reinforced like just how much I love it, uh, how much I love all their paints. They are, they're all a little bit different. Um, some of them I love, like the Armenian Purple Ochre. That's, that's a good, beautiful, really nice paint. Um, but yeah, that's A. And then going forward, we have a couple of just loose sort of lighting sketches here. I don't think any of these really turned out, but they were good to do. Um, again, switching between the smooth side for studies and then the rough side for the actual letters that I was doing so that they all had the same texture when I scanned them into the computer later. This is B for Basilisk, and this one I ended up redoing right at the end because I just was never happy with how this one turned out. I think it's because he, like, doesn't really have a body, so he looks like someone kind of chopped him off. Um, and I just felt that it didn't really rise to the same level as the rest of the series, so I redid him later. This is C for Caladrius, a Roman bird that is said to heal the sick. So if you place the bird on the chest of a sick person, the bird will then fly away and take the illness with them. So I added a few secret skulls hiding in here uh, as the as the bird flies away. D is for the downlooker, and this is a particular creature that shows up in Gustave Flaubert's The Temptation of St. Anthony, and the creature talks to St. Anthony a little bit, so I thought that was an interesting one for D, and I didn't really want to do dragon because I draw a lot of dragons already, um, and a lot of these creatures are dragon-like in the first place, so this one was a bit different, and I patterned it off of a muskox. These were on my YouTube channel. They are some black and white little architecture studies. Uh, these ones done without any pencil drawing, just paint to paper, which is really good practice. Um, it's easy for them to turn out kind of wonky. I think these are a little bit wonky. Um, if I wanted to do a more tight study, I would obviously draw it before, but it's just, it's good practice for your brain to think in shapes and value instead of line. On this side here, we have E for the Aramanthian boar, a very large pig in Greek mythology that causes a lot of trouble. So I wanted to, of course, show that he was huge. So I have him here and then tiny birds in a tiny forest so that you know who we're talking about. F is for Fenrir, a wolf from Norse mythology. Here he is eating the hand of his rival human or god. I suppose. <laughs> G is for Gamma Yun, a Russian bird woman, the head of a woman and the body of a bird and sort of a prophetess type creature. H is for Hippocamp, a water horse. I really like this color here. This is Stone Ground Pink Co's Mayan Green and I just, ooh, it's so pretty and it's so like aquatic. It's a very watery type color. Just a quick sketch of a, a fairy and a girl. These ones I didn't put a lot of time into. Just sort of doodling to pass the time, really. I is for Ichnemon, which is a medieval term basically for a mongoose. Um, they called it a type of serpent that could slay crocodiles um, or other serpents and uh, I just really like sort of that pseudoscience, you know, um, approach to classifying these animals, you know, before they really knew what was going on, before people were like, you know, fully 
observing animals in Egypt, and they were like, ooh, in Egypt, the secret thing lives, a, an ichneumon, and it's very powerful, and you know what? It's just a, it's just an Egyptian mongoose in the end. Um, but I really liked fitting it into the eye shape, just this rectangle. Um, I think that's really cool. J is for jackalope, and the, uh, the sort of green color of this jackalope, um, my boyfriend said that I could color, I should color it green. Um, there's a little story that Terrence McKenna used to tell uh, about seeing a jackalope, um, and so it's sort of inspired by that too. Um, if you know Terrence McKenna, then you know that it's like, it's a funny story. Um, K is for Keresh. This is a, basically a unicorn from Jewish folklore. Um, and I based it, I think, off of a Persian fallow deer, uh, a deer that actually lives in Israel. L is for Lamassu, a bull with the head of a man and with wings from Sumerian uh, Persian mythology. Um, they have lots of really cool statues of Lamassu. Um, usually they're standing, of course, but to fit the shape of the L, I have the, the bull half laying down. This is a nice little dragon that I painted, and I quite I quite like this actually. I might um, bookmark this for later and put it on a shop somewhere because it just it turned out really nice. Again, it's that Armenian purple ochre that is just so nice. Um, and this here was my take on the Page of Swords from the Rider Waite Tarot deck, um, which is the tarot deck that I have. Um, I turn it all the way, but I'll, I'll probably bonk the the tripod, but anyway, there he is. On this side here, we have M for Musamon, which is a heraldic animal. It's half goat, half sheep. Don't ask me why that would be significant at all, because they kind of seem like very similar animals to begin with. N is for the Namian lion, who is along the same lines as the Arimanthian boar. He's an especially powerful lion from Greek mythology. O is for the Ogopogo, which is a serpent, a sea serpent um, cryptid type creature that is said to live in the Okanagan Lake in, um, here in Canada actually, Lake Okanagan. Um, and so he's sort of like the Canadian Nessie, uh, but uh, as a kid, they would show up on Canadian kids broadcasting and stuff, you know. Um, and he always has these like Shrek ear nubbins, and uh, he's a long, long guy, less of a plesiosaur than Nessie, more of a of a, of a serpent. Um, so of course, I had to get Ogopogo in here. P here is for Phoenix, and I think this one turned out very nice and delicate really pretty i didn't want to go too ham on the on the flame um the flame aspect of the phoenix uh in flaubert's uh, la tentation de saint antoine um the the phoenix is described a little bit more as like an astral like cosmic bird like among the stars and stuff so that's that's why it's got stars there instead of flames. This was another attempt to do one of those like uh, dragons from the previous page, but I don't think this one is quite as successful, but it is in a nice color. This is uh, from Beam Paints. Um, really, really great brand, really great color. I like the tail, but I don't like the rest. <laughs> Back to the letters here. Uh, Q is for Keelin. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Chinese unicorn type creature. There's a lot of unicorn types in here. Um, what can I say? I like what I like. R is for Ramidrehu, uh, which is a Cantabrian mythological creature. It's like part weasel, part snake, part pig, and uh, it has all these sort of magical properties and lives in the forest. S is for Selkie, a woman who turns into a seal or vice versa. Um, so I have 
her partly seal here and then partly with the seal skin which plays a large role in tales about the selkie. T is for Tour Truif, which I'm not so great at pronouncing. I've been learning Welsh for over a year now, um, but it still gets kind of stuck in my throat because I'm not a native speaker. Um, I don't speak with any native speakers. It's just me on my own being fascinated with the language. But uh, the uh, Tour Truif is a boar from Welsh mythology. He shows up in um, some of the the, the stories. Um, I think he, he shows up specifically in the story of How Kuluch Wan Olwen. And uh, he's basically a giant boar um, who keeps treasures between his ears. And in order for Kuluch to marry Olwen, he has to get these treasures from between the, the, the boar's ears. And it's very hard to kill him, and he even enlists King Arthur to help him. Um, but it doesn't really matter how many arrows they shoot into Tur Truith, he doesn't die. And eventually they have to, like, drive him into the sea. So it's similar to the Aramanthian boar in that it's like a giant scary boar. Um, but I just, I've been reading the Mabinogion and uh, Welsh Welsh stories like that, so I just wanted to sort of make sure I was representing some Welsh uh, creatures in, in here. I was sort of torn between doing this one and a few other animals that show up. Uh, for example, the stag of Redinvre. I wanted to do that one too, but then I thought um, the selkie would fit better for the letter S than, than a stag. Even though I could like curl the, the antlers, I think this fit better. Here's a color scheme that I was sort of muddling through that I quite like with some of the new paints that Stone Ground Paint Co. kindly sent to me. Um, I'd like to do like a full painting in these colors. I just think it's a really nice limited palette. So this is their Mayan Violet. Their, uh, what's it called here? burnt sienna crimson so like a more reddish burnt sienna and their felsite i just think that's a really cool um it's sort of like a skewed primary color palette actually because a blue a red and a yellow even though the blue is sort of more purple and the red's a little more orange i think that's really cool getting to the end of the alphabet this is u for unicorn because i just I can't resist. I love a unicorn. This has some vegetable elements based on the unicorn tapestry, which if you guys have bought my uh, dinosaur tapestry print off of Etsy, you know that I'm just big into that. Big favorite. Really nice. This creature here is Vidlpner, which is a, uh, a golden rooster from Norse Icelandic mythology. Um, hopefully I said that right. If I didn't, um, yeah, it's a golden rooster. <laughs> he lives on top of a tree, but the tree is not Yggdrasil. It's a different tree. I forget which tree. <laughs> w is for werewolf. I just like werewolves. I like werewolves and vampires. I'm kind of like, you know, and unicorns. You know, you can't beat the classics, right? Um, X is for Jokwatl, um, a type of azure serpent from Aztec mythology. And so this is based quite a bit off of the carvings um, to get the face right. And then, of course, bending the body into an X shape. On this side is some of Stone Ground Paint Co.'s uh, pearlescent and metallic paints. Um, I just did some some flowers and some swatches and you can see like just how bright and flashy they are. I just think they're they're so pretty. They're so fun to play with. They re-wet really well like compared to lots of other glittery paints and they're just they're so pretty. They're so pretty. Right at the end of the alphabet here, Y is for Yatagrasu, um, a crow with three legs. 
and Z is for Zu or Anzu, a uh, Mesopotamian mythological creature or god-like animal. The interesting thing about this is that there's also a dinosaur genus called Anzu. Uh, the specific name is Anzu wylie, and it's a type of uh, oviraptor, so a feathered beast. So quite like this, actually. They wouldn't have had, you know, a lion's face, but they would definitely have the feathers. And then this is the, I'm calling it a pickup, um, but anyway, I redid the, the B because I wasn't happy about it. So this is the final B is for basilisk, getting more of that serpent quality into it um, that was missing from the first one. And I'm much happier with, with this. So there weren't many that I wanted to redo. And of course, all of these I did sketches for in my other sketchbooks. Um, just because I wanted to save the nice paper here for the finals. And eventually I will clean them all up, edit them all, put them in a book, do the do the typesetting. I want to do some cool like like medieval typesetting, like arts and crafts style um, typesetting. If, you've, if you saw any of the, the books that William Morris and uh, Kelmscott Press did, I've always loved that look, that sort of... Um, which is a very like illuminated manuscript look, but it has the mechanical quality of the turn of the century. Um, I just think it, it 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 speaks to me. I've always I've always been drawn to that. I've always liked that. Uh, you know, I liked William Morris before I really even learned who he was. Um, yeah, definitely my favorite part in art history. That and the yeah him the pre Raphaelites, um, and then stuff from like the early Middle Ages. Here's just a little, little profile portrait and a fox and some shiny, shiny pearlescent flowers again. Like, they're just so nice. Obviously you can't capture this um, really that well on camera or, you know, scanning and stuff, but it's just so pretty. And I got to make sure that I like you know, use this for birthday cards and stuff. Like, that's what these paints are really good for. And here are some dispersion tests that I did with uh, some liquid watercolors, dropping them into water. They bloom like crazy. It's really cool. And uh, the last page here, I just uh, tried some type with uh, actually India ink, but then there was like glitter in the water from the glittery paints before so it's like it's sparkly india ink normally um i would like to keep in these pockets in the back of my sketchbook like tickets of things that i've gone to places i've been i have been nowhere i have gone to nothing um anything i would have gone to has obviously been cancelled so there's nothing in here except for like this is one of the cards from my tarot deck it's just like the, you know, the useless, like, information card. Like, you know when you get a, a box of cards and there's a joker? This is that. But I like the stars, so that's all that lives in here. Um, it's sad, I guess, but also it's important to be responsible um, in this strange, strange time in human history. Um, anyway... Overall, do I recommend the Arteza watercolor sketchbook? Actually, yes, I do. I was not sure at first, um, but now that I've used it longer, yeah, it's good. Um, just bear in mind, of course, that you have the smooth side that doesn't take paint as well and the rough side that takes paint quite nicely. I like the texture. It's subtle, but it does the trick. Um, it plays really nicely with all of my handmade watercolors, which I have quite a lot of. And I think this sketchbook is quite successful, partly because obviously I was using it for a big project, a big cohesive project. And um, I'm looking forward to moving into my next sketchbook. I'll pick it up here and show you the brand. I'll finally be using this SMLT art watercolor hashtag authentic book, <laughs> which 
you know, is a funny name for it. It's a watercolor album. It is uh, saddle stitched like this, a single signature. You can see this is a piece of paper I got from a friend that I'm saving um, because it's got the nicest texture in the world. I just have to paint something good on it. Um, I did one starter piece in here. I'm gonna show you, this is the teaser. These are gonna become holographic stickers. Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna test them out and see if they sell okay and then maybe order more. Um, but yeah, this will be the next sketchbook tour that shows up on this channel. So if you would like to see that, please subscribe so that you get um, my videos in your subscription box. You can hit that little um, bell icon if you want notifications. I personally am allergic to notifications, so I have them turned off. I still get a notification every now and then, like when somebody comments on my videos, but it is not... Um, it never works properly like the, the bell will light up and then I'll go to check the notifications and I'll be like you have no notifications um so anyway that's that's my review of the YouTube notification um system in that I don't think it works um <laughs> but uh if you if it works for you like you know feel free um I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed this sketchbook and I will see you in the next one Bye!